would like you to bring us your personal ultimate comfort food. Anything you like, whatever dish comes to mind, just as long as it's yours. For me, it would be lo mai gai, which is the sticky rice parcels wrapped in lotus leaves. You know, it, it just has everything. It has carbs, it has protein, it has the feeling of home, and I absolutely love them. For me, mine's this weird pasta dish that I cook after a long night of service with like blistered cherry tomatoes, heaps of anchovies, lemon, garlic, casareche, and I just sit there with a glass of wine and I am <laughs> This could be anything. Doesn't have to be savoury either. My grandmother, for example, her favourite comfort food was a slice of Victoria sponge cake and a cup of tea, right? It doesn't need to be anything preconceived in your mind. Doesn't have to be savoury, doesn't have to be sweet, could be anything, yeah? Comfort food is all about nostalgia. It might be a dish everyone loves, but everyone has a different reason for loving it. It's like a big hug from your grand, and that's what we want from you two. You guys have everything at your disposal. Open pantry, gardens at play, and you have 60 minutes and your time starts now. We cooking, Jess? I'm going to be making a red duck curry with roti canai and some coconut rice. Wow, comfort food at your house. Pretty good. <laughs> I hope so. Have you got enough time to cook that? But I think it should be OK. But pressure cooking the duck? Pressure cooking the duck for about 30 minutes to tenderize it. Um, wow, apple aromat. juice. With apple juice, a bit of sweetness. And um, yeah, hopefully the flavours work. And I'm making two types of paste as well. So I'm making a Thai chilli paste to accompany the red curry, and then also the red curry paste itself. It looks, looks like you've got nothing to worry about here. She hasn't even started yet. Um, I'm going to do a fish, yeah. A fish custard, actually. Comfort, com comfort food at your both of your houses is crazy. Fancy. It's very fancy. <laughs> I'm making otak otak oh. and nasi lemak. And nasi lemak. So can you explain to me briefly what yeah. exactly is it? So it's um, it, it's a fish custard cooked in banana leaf. Fish custard cooked in banana leaf. Yeah. So when a custard with chunks of. Fish in it, or...? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm actually going to scrape it. That's a, like, old-fashioned technique, like yep. you use for making fish balls. So I'll take this fillet off, and I'll get a spoon and scrape the flesh off, and then mix it with eggs and an aromatic spice paste, and then steam it in the banana leaf. Wow! And a nasty lemak as well. Yeah. Yeah. With all the things, part like... part of it all together. OK, you know what's hilarious? I'm also making a sambal. You are going to do a sambal? Yeah. OK. Unless yes, I'm missing something, you're also missing your banana leaf. Yeah, I know. I have to go get it. All right from the garden. I love it. This is a dish that's actually quite complex, but I eat it for comfort because it's stuff that my mum makes for me. No, 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 Wait no. Wait for an egg. My egg. Oh, my God, oh, the egg. Is everything else done? Yes. Is your egg going to make it? Um, uh, I hope so. Jess, are you almost done? Uh, nearly there. I might add just one last thing. Oh! At the start of the cook, I wanted to add a Thai chili jam. Oh, my Lord. But my curry is quite sweet. And if I add a Thai chili powder to that, I think it'll balance it out just nicely. Come on, bless the jam. Bless the jam. I've got some dried chilies, some dried ponds. Add that into a spice grinder, blitz it up until a nice powder, and add some salt. Beautiful, Jess. Nice, Jess. Dried shrimp powder, basically, it's got a lot of umami, salty flavour, and I think that would kind of complement the whole dish. Well done, Jess. You've done so well. Oh, shit. Uh, po, just fry it. Just fry an egg. Huh? Fry Girl, one off. We're running out of time just... here. Paul, as always, down to the last minute. And there is only one minute to go! Oh! Oh! Yeah! Uh, I'm just waiting for my egg to boil. It's actually quite an integral part of the dish, to be honest. It's not just, like, just an egg. Without it, it's kind of lame. You know, it's 
Yeah. And eat this egg done. Less than a minute, less than a minute, less than a minute. Egg cooked or not cooked? Can I serve it with a shell on? <laughs> just kidding. I'm just no. kidding. No! I'm no. just kidding. kidding. That egg. Oh, my God. Oh, my, oh my God. Come on, Pope. That's it, Poe. Oh. Just got a Nero plate, ready to go. Come on. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. oh lovely. Oh, I feel... Can you peel an egg in 10 seconds? Oh. <laughs> Time's up. I feel like I've accomplished everything that I've wanted, but that darn egg. Nasty Lamarck. Will I weep into my nasty Lamarck like I did when I was at school? Perhaps. <laughs>I think that it's clear that Jess shows intuition and intelligence in her cooking that belies her years. I mean, she put all of herself into this mind, body and soul and it really shows. This dish is totally my childhood on a plate, but I tried to achieve too much and that could cost me immunity. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Were you happy with that cook? Um, actually, I, I'm happy with the result. It was just the all the little elements just started to get to me, and I realised I had 
of course. Uh, I tried to do too much, but I got there in the end. Is that maybe the egg presentation? Bit dodgy. I want to know where you are when you're having a little gnaw on this as your ultimate comfort food dish. Oh, nice. OK. <laughs> Sitting on the couch, mm -hmm. um, usually I'd only have these, uh, those elements without that. Oh, really? Yeah. So I always have a jar of that, jar of that, cucumber, no problem. Mum makes that for me on tap. <laughs> oh. and, and I just boil an egg or fry an egg. OK, so yeah. your ultimate comfort food is nasi lemak. Nasi lemak, yeah. But with a bit of extra you know, yeah. specialness here. So what's yes. the dish? Um, nasi lemak is pretty much Malaysia's national dish. It's all about the rice and everything is there to flavour it. Um, the other little extra element I've got is the otak otak, which is, it's like a curry fish custard. And you just, everything just goes in together. So what makes the fish custard into the rice as well or, no, or on the side? I'd, eat, I'd mix all this together and then I'd probably have a little, a little bit, of bit of it. Yeah, a little that. bite of it on the side. Thank you. We'll taste now. Thanks, Mum. I reckon if Poe's mum makes that for her, it must be pretty special. Yeah. Oh, man. Let's do this. Yeah. That looks pretty perfect to me. I'm a much happier person now that I've tried that for the first time. The parcel had a long, long journey of flavours, which was amazing. But that sambal would just give me that on some rice any day of the week. If I was going to critique anything, it would be with the sambal. For me, it kind of overpowered the parcel. That would be my only complaint, but still, I love that plate of food. I mean, technically, they are two different dishes, and yeah, you're right, you know, there are lots of flavours competing. This kind of food takes me back to sitting, you know, in a hawker stall anywhere in Singapore, even as well as Malaysia. And, you know, you have this first thing in the morning, and who needs cereal when you can have that? I mean, all those roasty, toasty kind of flavours from the peanuts and the crunchy gambilis, and then you have that perfect rice, and it is all about the rice. And that's just talking about the nasi lemak. Then you talk about the otak otak. It is sort of very subtle. The spice just kind of grows and the flavour just kind of builds. Um, and I love that the fact that the fish is just set. It has a really beautiful texture to it. And when you bring it all together with the rice, I mean, that is just love on a plate. I, d I really did enjoy it. The fish, the texture, the custard, you know, it's beautiful. For me, I think the egg was critical with that whole thing. There's a couple of minus points for presentation, but it brought it together from a richness point of view. So I think she was right to try and boil it and get it there on time. But as usual, Paul is like down to the <laughs> microsecond. <laughs> <you know>? Microsecond. <laughs> yeah. I 100% believe my dessert is heavily featuring that Madeira. My savory, as delicious as it is, needs to hit the brief. I'm happy that I've left the quail off the dish because at this point of the competition, imperfection will send you to the bottom. Hi, hey Reynolds. Hello, hello. Oh, there's the veil in all its glory. Yes. All right, Reynolds, what's your savory dish and what is your sweet dish? I chose dates to feature in my savory and Madeira for my dessert. Savory dish is shiitake mushrooms glazed with some chicken and mushroom reduction. Date puree and brown butter potato foam. And for the dessert is a chocolate brownie with uh, Madeira gelato and a Madeira veil. I was excited to eat quail because yeah. you know, I've been half Italian. Quail's one of my favorite. I knew you were cooking quail today. And of all the people who will bring me awesome quail, Reynolds is you, so I can't wait to try the quail. I overcooked it. So you could have done it, but you I overcooked could have it. Done, yes. Your gut feel is though it hasn't impacted the dish. I love the flavours, really. Um, the date will bring sweetness to it, because it would have added another layer to hide the dates. 
I'm guessing that you were feeling the pressure of getting in the top five today. Yeah. All right, mate, do you want to finish him off? Yes. Thank you. So that's the uh, brown butter potato fun. Got it. Good toast, mate. Thanks, Thanks you. mate. Thank you. Okay. Savory to you. I loved the dish. I mean, this brown butter potato foam, it was potatoey and brown buttery, like those two flavors were very, very discernible and really cohesive and the texture was like aerated velvet. It was just, you know, you want to wrap yourself in it. It's absolutely gorgeous. And then the rest of the components, that turbo chicken jus was just, it was finger licking kind of like lip smackingly rich. But I can't help but think a piece of quail grilled beautifully, you know, with the dates. It would have been even better, but as it stands, it was delicious. Yeah, in terms of the, the savoury course itself, I loved the flavour of it. I, it was delicious. The forefront flavour was umami, and you got this little sweet aftertaste, which was obviously from the dates, but if the quail was on there, it would have been all the better for it. Mm. I think, actually, it might have brought out the flavour of the dates a little bit more. I'm disappointed that at this level, he's overcooked the quail. You shouldn't have overcooked that, really. All right, the dessert now. That veil that he's done on the top, it actually says Madeira to me. Yeah. 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 I love it. It almost looks like a piece of smoky glass or something like that. I love it. It's quite cool. It looks really good. Let's tuck in. Thank you. Madeira, it's bloody there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. It is packed in your face of Madeira. I really loved the flavours in this dish. I thought the deep chocolatey flavour of that brownie was really nice in terms of contrast to that sweet, whiny Madeira. The gelato itself was textbook Reynolds. It was silky smooth and had a wonderful texture and balance of flavour about it. And then that beautiful veil of Madeira over the top added not only a visual interest, but then a reinforcement of that Madeira flavour. I loved it. I thought it was delicious. Well, we need to compare. This is going to be the interesting thing because we need to pick someone and give them immunity and put them through the top five. You know, these are six delicious dishes for sure, but some of them didn't highlight the feature ingredient enough. Who's it going to be? these pizzas today is, is a little bit daunting. These are the Rolls Royce of pizza ovens. It's it's not like just banging it in the oven at home. No, I've got to move, 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 I've got move. I've got to move. I've got to move. I've got to move. Cooking today in front of a world champion pizza maker, so the pressure's on. Good. Yep, good. Uh, come there it goes. On. Nice There's a little bit of a technique to putting a pizza in the oven. Yeah, these pizzas only take about 90 seconds all up to cook. I want to make sure I don't melt the cheese too much. And here comes the prawn. Got to place it gently in there and then just rip it out quickly. Hi right, guys, ready when you are. Red tea, two mushrooms, one onion. Yes, sir. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Get easy, get easy. It's unbelievable how fast it's all happening. The orders are just flying in. I don't know how many waiters they've got out there, but obviously too many. Just grab two hands on one side, on that side, and pull it. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty hectic in here. I'm on stretching duty, so my hands are getting to work out, but yeah, it's got to keep my ears sharp. When Eloise gets an order in, we've got to get straight on it. Stretch like you've never stretched before. Nicole and I are doing the construction of the pieces today. Josh is putting it in the oven, 90 seconds, out it comes. Aaron grabs the pizza, slices it into six, does all the garnish work, and straight over to Eloise. Two mushrooms, one onion. 
one onion. Come on, andiamo. I'm so glad we've been able to hear the dough today and not overcomplicate it with too many toppings. It means we can pump out these pieces super quick. Okay, okay. Come on, guys, you're doing a great job. Keep it up. So hopefully the judges agree and, and they give us the thumbs up. Thank you. Okay, thank you thank very you. much. Grazie mille. So this is the red team, yeah? So red team, yeah. So we've got caramelised onion, salagio and rocket. And we've got portobello mushroom, olive and suppresso. It's really tasty. I mean, yeah. that, that is so much better than 90% of the pizzas out there. It's wood fired, it's tasty, it's puffy. Not many people will complain about that. One of the things people always talk about is you know, how much is the right amount of topping. Certainly here at Grady, Johnny's not a fan of heavy topping, so I reckon the two done pretty well. The, the, the puff they got around the edge and the elasticity of the dough is really, really good. Heavy dough with toppings, not topping with dough, and that's what they've achieved. This is their first team challenge. Yeah. 250 people in the building, um, and pizzas like this are coming out. It's great. Well, red team, I think, off to a pretty good start. I'm, yeah. I'm certainly happy, and you know, I always reckon, you know it's good pizza when there's no crust left on the plate. We're, like, pretty much nailing it. Shall we get the uh, green teams in? Green team, listen up. I need it's three nice. pawns and three pancetta. This one's waiting for us. Yep. Yeah, yeah, right, keep them pumping, boys. Uh, we're about halfway into the pizza service now. Please redo it. It's, yeah, too, it's too much. much. Unfortunately, a couple of these pizzas have come back. I've been so cautious about not melting the cheese too much that the bases are actually a little bit blonde. Behind. Behind. Oh, I don't think Johnny's real happy on this. If you are not happy with this at your table, you don't send it out, yeah? Okay. I don't want to see pizza like this ever again. I've just got a soldier on, adjust me cooking times and make sure I'm doing it properly. Watch the topping, guys. Watch the topping. And I just hope the cheese turns out OK. Let's go. That's good. That's good. Yep. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Look at that. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Brilliant. What do you reckon? Chili and garlic prawn pizza. That was the first one. So the second one is pancetta, mozzarella, rocket, and balsamic. First impressions? Maybe not quite as much puff in the dough as the, the red team got, which is, you know, again, a, a key thing about the, the, the pizzas here at Grady. Actually, now looking at it, it's the only odd thing, isn't it? See how wet it is in the middle there? It's really wet. It's, it's not quite right, is it? Great flavour, but it's wet. Like, it's really wet. Yeah, look, you know what they've done? They've got two ingredients that are wet. They've got the fresh mozzarella, and that, by nature, is just will, especially if you overcook it too, it just weeps all of that moisture, and then they put balsamic on. So really, I mean, look, that's a big problem for me. Could put the green team in a little bit of trouble if there's any more mistakes on the menu. Have we got a pan ready to toss the sauce through? Feeling really positive at this stage. Sarah is making the sauce and it looks really beautiful and I know it's just gonna pair really well with the fettuccine that we've made. Looks amazing, guys. I'm so proud of the dish and I know Sarah and Eliza are as well. One of each and that's it for pizza red tea. Oh my god, I know. Yeah, done. Okay, let's go. Pasta's up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Pizza service is done. We've got to clean down the benches and get onto pasta service ASAP. I'm putting pasta in. Got it. So Carly and I are now manning the pasta section. Get it in there. The actual fettuccine that we've made is just going to be tossed through that pasta sauce. Are you shaking the pasta into the sauce? Like yeah, 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 yeah. I'm shaking the pan to break up the pasta and make sure that the sauce gets on every length. We want to make sure that our customers get that spicy rabiata flavour with every bite. Good girl, good girl. Killing it, absolutely killing it. Good job, it's beautiful, it looks beautiful. It looks really saucy. Woo! Saucy! 
And in front, Maya. You ready to go? You ready yes. to go after passes? Yes. That's with the two. Done. Thank you. Thank you. So what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Uh, Arabiata, so angry pasta. Shall we expect a nice hit of chili, some good chunks of suppressor salami, and a lovely bright tomato sauce? I'll tell you what, the tomato sauce is bright and the pasta looks good too. Oh, oh yeah. That's amazing. Bit of a chili hit. Yum. I love it. Delicious. It's not, not hard to keep us happy, is it? No. That pasta is, you know, as good as any you'd find in a, in, yeah. in a, in a great restaurant in Italy. It's a really, really, really delicious bowl of pasta. Top notch. There you go. That's, uh, I'm so happy with that. Great tomato sauce, lots of flavour, nice chilli head. Amazing. <laughs> That's what it's all about, you know, just simplicity and all about punch of flavour. You know, I didn't think an angry pasta would make us this happy. Yeah. It certainly made us happy. Really gorgeous. Can I get another bowl? Guys, we've got to push faster. There's so many dockets out, so many people that are hungry. No mucking around now. Pasta's behind. Bacon is here. OK. We've got the bacon and we've got... Where are our roasted tomatoes? Oh, my God, I don't know. I don't know where they are. With our pasta dish, I'm really happy with the spaghetti. Done. But there won't be any any dish if there's no sauce. We need three more pastas. Three more. Quick, quick, quick. Yeah. Three more. Oh. We've got garlic, chilli, bacon, roast tomatoes. But we still don't have anywhere near enough sauce to cover the amount of dishes we need to serve today. Is that everything? One tomato per plate. One tomato per plate. People are hungry, guys. No, we don't have enough. We have to dial it back and send out some fairly bland pasta. How is it then? Needs salt. There's not going to be punch. The flavours are being lost. Needs more. No, one on each, one on each. We won't have enough otherwise. Not the way an uglier olio should be. OK, these three. Here, Johnny, go. Thank you. It's not what I was expecting at all. No. Wow. So this is spaghetti alle olio. That pasta looks pretty good. I smell the garlic. I think the pasta itself is, is beautiful. It's soft, it's very fine, but the enjoyment of the dish stops there for me. There's lots of elements on it, but they're not, they're not built into the pasta. So the flavor of the blistered tomatoes, the yellow tomato, the bacon, the olive oil, is not in the pasta. That's, I, want it, I want an emulsion with all those beautiful flavors smashed through it. That's the whole joy of eating pasta. And that's the thing, that yellow tomato, you've still got yours, yeah. hasn't even got anything done no, to it. No, it's raw. OK, that one there has, but, you know, you squash <laughs> that, that there, that, yeah. all that juice there you go, look, there In you the go. olive oil yeah. is there you what go. we want. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a, a, a is that type of dish that you sit your fork in and you get everything on it. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And there's just not enough. It's just such a pity with all... Just such a pity with so much work having gone into that pasta and really wanted to cook that it, the rest of the elements have let it down. Right, did you have fun with Gary? Yes. Yeah, was that delicious? Yes. That ice cream is the way I like to try and cook in the kitchen. I'm not a chef, I'm a home cook, and my job is to try and find quicker, easier, tastier ways of doing stuff that traditionally would take a really long time. So this recipe is basically nuggets and chips, but if you're going to cook for a family, if you're going to cook for your kids as well, it's really about um, providing some healthy, nutritious stuff as well. So, you know, the, the little bit of butter that we're going to put on the, the, the nuggets, the schnitzel bits, um, that's a decadent bit, but the chips don't use any oil. We're going to serve the nuggets and the chips in little lettuce cups like Sancho Bao. So it's fun to assemble, it's a good thing to do, and I think part of the, the joy of getting kids to eat is to actually get them involved in the process. So, very simple, uh, standard schnitzel crumb. Oh, you could use fresh bread crumbs, and then into there I'm going to put some freshly picked thyme. You don't, you don't need to use thyme, 
thyme gives you that, that lovely kind of garden flavour and also probably about half a cup of parmesan. Um, then we're just going to toss this together and we're just going to use this, this crumb in order to dress some chicken thighs. Meat mallet, flat side. We're not, we're not trying to tenderise and break up the, the fibres of the chicken, we just want to flatten it. So two thighs spread out, second bit of grease proof over the top. So I'm just going to cut the chicken into bite-sized chunks. Bit of chicken, put a couple of bits of chicken in. I put the butter over some steaming water just to keep it warm, just to ensure that it doesn't set on me. Then toss them around in the crumb, just so they get nicely coated. And then on a flat-sided baking tray, you want the air to circulate, so you want to give these beauties a bit of space so they toast up. This is the only thing that's going to take your time. You don't want to do four or five batches and then keep them warm in a warming drawer in a slow oven as well. So this tray of crumb thighs goes in the oven for about 15, 20 minutes at 200 degrees. Right, now, sweet potato chips. So these sweet potato chips are made with no oil. Again, we're using baking paper because it's not going to stick. We're going to peel ribbons of sweet potato to lay on the baking sheets. So we've done it with pasta chips. It's standard. It's super simple. And we're just going to lay them on the baking tray. Um, so these, these slices into um, a moderate oven, 160 degrees. We've got our nuggets cooking in the oven. We've got the chips going in another oven. We're now going to make something to go with that, something decadent, something delicious, basically a miso and bacon mayonnaise. The beauty about this mayonnaise is it's robust. You can put other flavours in it. Now, Nicole, do you want to come up and have a go? Yeah. I need, in the bottom of there, a tablespoon, or kind of generous heap tablespoon of miso at the bottom. About a tablespoon of rice wine vinegar. Oh, next up, whole egg. First. Crack a whole egg. Yep. Um, now, they're really important not to break the yolk of the egg. This is the only rule with it. What I would do is, is I'd, I'd, I'd rest that down there. Now, it's a crack, then you can drop it in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. All right, yeah, done. Great, fantastic, good work. All right, <laughs> stand it up. I'll take that for you. And then I'm going to make quite a thick mayonnaise. I'm going to, we're going to push it. So I'm going to use 350 ml of, of oil. Right, stick blender. We're going to put the basket of stick blender with the blade over the egg yolk. All right. Now, when we turn on the, um, the, the blender, you're going to, when you start seeing little white ribbons come out from the bottom, you're going to start pulling the blender up through the mayonnaise, give it a bit of a bounce, and it should come together. If it doesn't, it's her fault. <laughs> Let's go. Press, watch the ribbons pull up through the pull up through the Let's go. Are they coming? Are they coming? Are they coming? Yes, all right, stop pulling it up through the pull it up, pull it up, all the way up. Bounce it a bit, bounce it a bit. Go on, go on, go on. Go on, keep on going, keep on going, all the way up the top. Bounce it down, up and down a bit. Oh my, how good is that? How good is that? How good is that? Well done. You stir, lift it up. Finger, no one's looking. Rock and roll, huh? Yeah. That's good. In order to incorporate the bacon, put in a few, a few chunks of it like that. Just blend it in, bounce it up and down <laughs> to incorporate, and away we go. All the way down. Look how robust that mayonnaise is. Isn't that crazy? We're gonna, we're gonna have to taste it again, you know that. Um, this will this will stay in your fridge for three four days, and now, now try that. Yeah. Oh so my! Good. Yeah, how good is that? Now that that is miso bacon mayonnaise. We'll put it in a fancy pot for serving because the boys wouldn't like it like that. And we're going to give Nicole a huge round of applause. That's great. <laughs> we now have to pull out our chips. They've shrunk a fair bit. This is why you need to do lots of trays and do it in advance. And you're also going to have to pull out your nuggets. Again, they're, they're, going to, they're going to shrink a bit. But super simple. OK, so we're going to plate up now. So I'm going to do this family style. Beautiful wooden board. Take the chips. Again, you know, that's probably five trays of chips here. But you want a big pile of them. So here we have our platter, our miso bacon mayonnaise, our buttery nuggets, and also our crisp. Get a wriggle on. 
my enemy definitely is time. How'd that happen? <laughs> so I've just tried my hardest in five different ways to extract as much out of those onions as possible. <laughs> it's an Australian onion soup, so it needs to be light, bright, sweet and savoury. I chose camembert cheese just because of the amount of fat it really coats your mouth and it should be good to carry that onion flavour around your mouth. Looks so good, Jesse. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah. One minute to go. Come on! Come on, my God! Finish it off! This is it. This is it. Tastes like onions. Tastes a lot like onions. Jesse, are you all sorted? Yeah. 30 seconds to go. Come on! Use every second, all right? Oh my god, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> that was that. Anymore. I don't know what just happened. Oh my goodness. <sighs> I'm so relieved at the end of this cook, but I'm just feeling so happy as well and just so proud of myself. Well, this is a match-up, is it? Hey, I like it. Yeah, I think, you know, this is going to be one of those tastings where I think it's gonna, we're going to struggle to, to spot the difference between the chef and the amateur. I've never been so excited because you could just feel both of them had nerves, mm. but good nerves. I think we're going to get cracking food. What about ingredients? Cheese and onions. <laughs> How good is life? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the first dish in. Australian onion soup. Wow, what do you reckon, guys? Well, interesting. Certainly a retake on uh, onion soup, isn't it? I was yeah. thinking, you know, crusty, bubbly top, but certainly crusty and bubbly on the top there, isn't it? Mm. Lots of freshness, colour. I just hope there's enough onion flavour in the soup to really make you think yeah. it's an onion soup. If you're going to modernise something, like we always say, which is great and I love the look of it, it's got to taste better than the classic. Yeah. Colour. Mm. What I love, champions cheese, champions onions. There's no doubt about it. What I'm not getting is a lot of that slow cooking, you know, that sweetness, that, that depth of flavour that, that cooking a great onion soup does. Obviously, it's an Australian version. It's lighter, it's yep. brighter, uh, it's fresher. It's not got that bang of flavour. And that's what's lovely mm. about French onion soup. You sit there and you hug it and you heat it and go, mm. oh, great. It's good. Cool. Right, let's get the next dish in. Jessie is such an amazing cook, so I am freaking out a little bit. 